May the peace of the Lord be with you all as we gather in worship for this fourth Sunday in Advent. We are one week away from celebrating Christ coming into our world fully anew. Um, this is our hymns and hot chocolate service. I see some of you drinking your hot chocolate, eating some cookies. Um, so thank you for everyone who, who has set up that. It's wonderful this morning. Uh, we are going to sing some favorite Christmas uh, carols, learn about the history of some of our, our central Christmas traditions, and celebrate in Advent worship together as we get so close now to Christmas Day. And so for all who are gathered in person, for all who are gathered online, for all who are gathered, welcome. Welcome as we worship, welcome as we bring the light of Christ among us. And to do that this morning, I am going to invite Ruth Ann. And as we worship together this morning in song and prayer, let us begin with song. We are going to sing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Let us sing. I will invite you now to our responsive opening prayer with the, the community responses in that bolded yellow on the screens. Let us pray. Enter this time of love-filled anticipation. Enter this space where we await Christmas once more. 
A star of love is rising. A new light is emerging in our world. The gospel of Christ is coming anew. Let us prepare our hearts and minds. The gospel of Christ is coming anew. The world will be transformed in love. Amen. As we come now to this fourth Sunday in Advent, we light the candles of hope, of peace, of joy, and now of love. And to light our Advent wreath this morning, I will invite the Bergman family. O oh God, we light the fourth candle in Advent in the anticipation that Christ is almost here. In your deep, abiding love, we celebrate the hope, peace, and joy of this season as we look to the Christmas star that you will soon guide us fully to you. This is our candle of love. Thank you, Bergmans. All right, and let us sing uh, verse four of Hope is a Star. There are, of course, many traditions that we celebrate at Christmas time, including uh, kind of the foundational tra uh, tradition that we celebrate Christmas on December 25th. We're one week away. And now there is, of course, some, some precise information that we can know about the timing of Jesus' birth. According to Luke chapter 2, we know that Caesar Augustus was emperor and that Quirinius was governor of Syria. So we know that Jesus' birth took place in that time. Quirinius is governor, uh, Augustus is Caesar. But anything more specific than that, we don't actually know. The Bible doesn't tell us. So why then? is Christmas celebrated on December 25th. How did that date come about for Christmas? And the answer to that is a bit of a mystery. There's no really conclusive answer to why we celebrate Christmas when we do. But there are theories, and there's a theory that I like a lot. So that's the theory I'm going to share with you today. 
And that theory says that Christmas came to be celebrated on December 25th because that is right around the darkest time of the year. And we, we are well familiar with that. We live in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, we're at that time of year where it's getting dark pretty early, four o'clock, it's pretty dark. And so Christ came into the world, Christ coming into the world at this time of year is seen as a, as a declaration of light amidst the darkness. We know from, from Genesis 1, the very beginning, that God says, let there be light, and there is light. And from John chapter 1, we know that the light of Christ shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. And so Christ coming into the world at this time of year is like an exclamation point of the light shining through the darkness. And of course, by December 25th, the days are starting to, to get just that little bit longer. We here being on December 18th, we are, we are so close to the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, and then the days start to get slowly, bit by bit, longer and longer. And so by the time you hit December 25th, you are just past that winter solstice, and each day there is a little bit more light in our world. And so Christ being born on December 25th is not only a symbol of light in the darkness, it's a symbol of that light continuing to grow and expand. And so on December 25th, we celebrate the light of Christ. God with us, God incarnate, coming into our world anew and shining that light through any darkness. And since we are now at that time of year, that winter darkness, that time of anticipation of Christ's light coming anew. Let us sing, and I'll invite you to, to remain seated as we sing, but we are going to sing in the bleak midwinter.
I will invite a member of the Bergman family now for our scripture reading from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be a Mary to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the same name, Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Thank you, Evan. Thank you to our choir. And if you see me um, taking a sip of hot chocolate and you want to go at any point to get more goodies, please do so. Please feel free to, to hop over and grab some more goodies because we are talking now about a Christmas goodie, a Christmas uh, tradition. Um, we began with kind of a, a serious Christmas tradition, which is why we celebrate Christmas when we do. And now we go to a, a less serious tradition and question now, which is why eggnog at Christmas? 
We've, we've just heard Matthew's gospel account of the lead up to Christ's birth. Uh, Mary becomes pregnant through the Holy Spirit. An angel appears to Joseph in a dream. He and Mary become husband and wife. And to top it all off, as you can imagine, they have a nice, tall, frothy glass of eggnog. <laughs> that part somehow got cut out of the Bible account, though. Matthew left that, <laughs> left that part out. Um, in reality, Chris, um, eggnog and Christmas don't seem to have that much of an actual connection. And yet it is enduringly popular as a cr traditional Christmas drink and flavor. Um, and I think eggnog is one of those things that you, you love or you hate. Who loves eggnog? Okay, yeah, quite a few, yeah. Uh, does anyone like highly dislike eggnog? I saw some like enthusiastic hands going up for that one, yes. Okay, so, so more love than, than hate. Um, is anyone kind of on the fence? I'm a bit more on the fence, yeah. There's a few of us, there's a few of us. Um, but whatever you feel, whether you love it, or you, you loathe it, or you feel maybe ambivalent towards it, eggnog is a Christmas staple. And so what is its story? Where does it come from? Um, well, early eggnog recipes seem to go back to the 13th century in England. People would drink hot milk that had been curdled with wine or ale and flavored spices, and flavored with spices. And, and sometimes raw eggs and figs would be added to this delicious sounding concoction. And so from, from this over time, over the centuries, our current basic version of eggnog emerged. Eggs beaten with sugar, milk and cream, with alcohol as a, you know, an optional addition. But how uh, eggnog came to be associated with Christmas is another story. So we have this drink that's been in existence for, for centuries, but, but why this Christmas association? And it, it is, again, a bit of a mystery. However, eggnog was actually originally served warm. Somehow over the centuries, it, it's morphed to become like a cold beverage, but originally it was a hot beverage. And so as you know, warm hot beverages are more likely to be served during the winter time, the cold months. Also, early eggnog recipes were, does anyone, is anyone familiar with a hot toddy? You know, you drink it when you have a cold or flu. Well, eggnog was kind of like a, the hot toddy of 13th century England. And, and so it was drunk when people were sick. And again, this time of year is a time of year people tend to have more of those colds and flus. And so it seems like, okay, it's a hot beverage. It's kind of functioning as a, as a remedy for cold and flu. This, you know, winter is when these things happen. You drink these hot beverages. So somehow in that, because it tended to be drunk more at this time of year, it just came to be associated with Christmas. How that jump came from like cold weather drink generally to like Christmas specifically is the mystery of the eggnog. But that is... Um, that is the story of eggnog. And so whether you have a carton of eggnog already in your fridge, whether you're avoiding it entirely, or maybe you've just been inspired right now by this to recreate an original eggnog recipe of hot curdled milk with wine, spices, eggs, and figs, um, tis the season for the most festive beverage that is eggnog. If you are going to make it with raw eggs, please be careful. That can go wrong, <laughs> but um, whether any first century shepherds tending their flocks would have enjoyed eggnog if given the chance, it's hard to say. But we do know that on one particular night, there are shepherds who had a most divine experience. And so let us sing while shepherds watch their flocks and um, um, yeah, if you would like to stand, let's stand for this one.
So a few announcements for this morning. Um, our blue Christmas service is happening today at 3 p.m. in room one down the hall here. Um, and it's a service that um, kind of acknowledges that Christmas is, is not a joyful time for everyone, or it's a time with mixed emotions for many people for many different reasons. And so it's a more uh, contemplative service, acknowledging some of the, the challenges of, of this time of year and, and finding hope in the light of Christ coming into our world anew. And of course, Christmas Eve will be this coming Saturday at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Um, a message from uh, Chris that it is the last day to purchase gift tags to support children in Canada's north. So I think she will be setting up shop in the upper narthex after the, the service. Um, again, please stick around after the service. There's tons of, of treats, of chocolate. So stick around for a time of fellowship up here in the upper narthex following the service. And finally, I will invite Ruth Ann to share a message. Oh, good morning. Um, I just wanted to thank you so much for all of your generous support in providing food for students at Algonquin College during exams. And the uh, the uh, Algonquin exams were held last week for the Christmas ones. But unfortunately, on Friday, uh, when it was City View's day to do their uh, provide and serve the snacks, we had a really big storm. And the president of the college announced that exams would be held virtually, so there wouldn't be students there. Um, so in the interest of safety of students and the staff and volunteers. So you're probably saying, well, what happened to the cookies that I baked? Uh, we therefore um, uh, decided that to give, there were, by the way, there were lots of muffins and cookies and we so much appreciate it after all these years that you're still supporting and doing this. And uh, we decided that uh, we would donate them to the Caldwell Family Center and uh, they sounded very happy about that. Um, just wanted to let you know that this free coffee break for students, as, as you know, was initiated by City View's uh, Christian Development Committee many, many years ago. I think it was over 20 years ago. And um, most of you have been involved in some way. Um, but it has grown uh, to include a number of local Christian churches um, who go to represent Algonquin College campus ministry. Um, many of the, lo the churches near us are involved, Parkwood Presbyterian, um, Knox United, um, Julian of Norwich. I think there are about 10 or 12 that um, have um, joined the group over the years and provide snacks at, at some point. You have always supported this outreach project in our local community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ruth Ann. Um, we, we share of ourselves in so many ways, including in support for the, the pause break for the Algonquin Campus Ministry and sharing of our baked goods for students there. Um, we share in, in giving our, our time and our talent, um, our, our listening and our prayer um, in, in so many ways. And that is a blessing. And in turn, we find blessing through all that we share. Um, so too are our financial gifts a blessing as we are able. Uh, and so thank you for your support of this uh, church community, the church in the world of City View United. Thank you for your support of the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada. Uh, thank you for your ongoing support and prayers for, for Lambert and, and his uh, worldly missions. In God's name, thank you for your support of local partners. And right now, of course, all local offerings are going to the Caldwell Family Center. May all that you offer continue to be a blessing, and may we each continue to find blessing in our God. Amen. And in a time of continued offering, I will invite Svetlana to a musical offering now.
Thank you, Svetlana. <laughs> uh, as we go into our, our final Christmas tradition for today, the tradition of milk and cookies for Santa. And where does this tradition come from? Um, has anyone here um, left out milk and cookies for Santa before? Nice. So what, what kind of cookies would people leave out? Ch chocolate chip, maybe Oreos, oatmeal, that kind of shortbread, yep, that's a good one. Um, now when I was a kid, we also left out carrots for the reindeer. I don't know if anyone's done that. And um, my parents, we, we also, instead of milk, um, we would leave out a glass of wine for Santa. Um, <laughs> because my parents said that Santa might want something a little different now and then, and which makes sense. Santa likes to change things up a little bit. Santa loves milk, but sometimes Santa likes something else as well. Um, but families and children have not always left out cookies and milk or, or other be beverages for Santa. Um, there was a time when, when Santa didn't get those snacks on Christmas Eve. In fact, Leaving out milk and cookies for Santa became popular in North America only about a hundred years ago, just under a hundred years ago. And this was during the time of the Great Depression in the 1930s. Um, and so during that time, a lot of families didn't have very much uh, money, of course. It was a, a time when, when people didn't have a lot of money. And so many parents tried to teach their children that it was still important to share with others and to show gratitude for the gifts that Santa would share with them at Christmas. And so kids were encouraged to share their own treats, their milk and cookies with Santa. These days, of course, many children and families continue that tradition by setting out cookies and milk for Santa as a way to continue to share. And I love that approach to putting up milk and cookies for Santa as, as seeing it as a way to share and as a symbol of being grateful for that which is shared with us at Christmas. Because we know that probably Santa gets pretty hungry and thirsty on Christmas Eve. It is a long night for him traveling around the world so it's a kind thing to think of Santa's needs and to share with him as we are able. And so let us pray for that. Loving God, thank you for the gifts we receive, whatever they may be. And thank you for the ways that we can share our own gifts on Christmas and beyond. Amen. And we are going to sing. I will invite you to remain seated because we are going to sing O Little Town of Bethlehem.
We come now to a time of offering our prayers together, prayers of concern and of joy, prayers of, of um, gratitude and lament are our prayers of hope this day. And let us begin as we pray with our prayers of concern, lament, and of hope. Let us pray. We pray this day for all of our neighbors who experience poverty in our city, in our country, and in our world. As inequality grows and as people increasingly struggle to make ends meet each month, we pray for transformation, recognizing that there is more than enough for everyone in this world. We pray for transformed hearts and transformed systems in the light of Christ that allow all people to live to their fullest potential, as God, of course, intends it. We pray for a world of peace, where soldiers are not called to fight, where civilians need not live amidst air raid sirens, where children need not grow up amidst blood shed and fear. We pray for the world our faith calls us to, where swords become plowshares and spears become pruning hooks. We pray for our earth and for all of creation recognizing that we need healing and a transformed relationship with our earth and climate. We pray for all who are experiencing the extremes of climate change right now, and we pray for a hopeful future. We pray this day for all who are ill, for all who are grappling with ongoing illness, for all undergoing treatments, for all awaiting diagnosis for all who are struggling with physical health or with mental health. And we pray for families as they grapple with the illness of a loved one or loved ones. And we pray for our healthcare workers amidst the healthcare system under strain. And gracious God, as we offer our prayers this day, we pray for all who need you. All who are experiencing grief and loss, all who struggle with uncertainty or pain, all who find the Advent and Christmas season hard. We pray that they may know your presence, your strength, and your love. And as we offer our prayers of concern, concern, lament, and hope this day, I invite you now into a time of sacred silence to offer the prayers that you may be holding in your hearts this day. And I invite you to offer those prayers now. Lord, hear our prayers. And here too, as we recognize that we have much to be thankful for this day. And so too, do we offer our prayers of thanksgiving and gratitude. We pray in greatest joy that we are now so close to Christmas and to the coming of Christ and the light of Christ anew into our world. We pray in gratitude for all that we have, for our health, for our homes, for the food in our cupboards and fridges, including even eggnog. For the warm clothing we have, for clean water, for peace and democracy in our country, for all that we are able to share, including the milk and cookies that we put out on Christmas Eve. We pray in thanksgiving for family and friends, community and loved ones, and we pray in thanksgiving for City View United in the community that we find here. And most of all, we pray in thanksgiving for the love, the joy, the peace, and the hope, the foundation that we find daily in you, O God, and in Christ's light coming anew. And as we offer our prayers of hope, of gratitude, of thanksgiving this morning, I invite you now into this time of sacred silence to offer your own prayers of gratitude now. Loving Creator, hear our prayers this day and the prayers of your people and indeed your creation throughout this earth. And as we offer our prayers, let us offer now to the words that Christ taught us each and all to say with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn for this morning will be Angels We Have Heard on High, and I invite you to stand as you are able. Go now into this day, into this week, into this, this world around us in the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love of this Advent season. Go forth knowing that you are loved, aboundingly, abundantly, unconditionally beloved by our God. Go forth knowing that you are loved. Go forth being love in our world. Hallelujah. Amen.